Uh, Bannockburn 101, Battle of Bannockburn. We're standing on the battlefield, behind me is the visitor centre, and over my left shoulder is, um, is the wee statue and the flagpole, both of Robert the Bruce, and apparently that's where Robert the Bruce set his standard on uh, as he came to the battlefield. So basically what happened here was that the Brit um, the British, <laughs> listen to me, is that um, the Scots beat the English quite significantly. Um, a couple of things that are interesting about the battle is that the Scots were only around about 8,000 and the English were about 20,000. Um, there's a, obviously a bit of myth around the battle in the sense that um, it happened quite long ago and the battlefield has changed. They don't know exactly where what is to such an extent that they still have regular um, digs here in the hills, in the area around us. Um, the crux of it is really that the English were overconfident um, and uh, they thought this was going to be a wipeout. Um, so they didn't really look after things um, as you would do in front of a battle. Um, one of the proofs of that is that um, on day one, on the 23rd, first day of the battle, Sir Henry de Bohan charges all valiantly um, charges Robert the Bruce um, but according to legend um, Bruce lobs his head off right in front of his own army and that already started the whole demoralization of um, of the English troops now there's a bit more detail around here about going into how the whole battle played out but essentially they kept being attacked by the English and the Scottish Chilterns pretty much very effectively um, stopped the charges. So early on the second day, on the 24th apparently, the um, Chilterns advanced forward into the cavalry. The cavalry pushed back and pushed back into their own troops which were wedged between the Bannockburn and the and another burn. I will read that out in a second. Um, basically they went and got stuck in the muddy banks um, of the horseshoe bends. Uh, it is called the Pelstrom, Pelstrom burn. Um, and this caused all the confusion and basically allowed the Scots to just plow into them. They were at some point trying to be outflanked by uh, archers but the Scottish light cavalry quickly made an end to that. Um, Edward II apparently um, tried to get back to Stirling Castle which was held by the English at the time but they didn't want to let him in probably out of fear because they already lost the battle uh, and the English troops dispersed and rapidly headed on home. That's pretty much that. <laughs>